Hello there mates, Mishi Gamer here and this is Shatterong Hong Kong Extended Edition Episode 11. So we were just following um their name, Isabel and Gobbit, yep, into their home. You can, you two can bunk here for a while, she knocks with her nose towards a hatch. You've each got a head to take care of your necessary, necess, okay, yeah, try to knock before you enter someone else's, okay? Take care of yourself. Seriously. I know the drill. Who turns to you? Thinks a fish. Just like that place we squatted at on Leary Avenue back when we were kids. One with that Aslan family and their dog. I remember it being a dump. You hated that dog, but they were good people. Yeah, until the 162 decided they wanted the place. He wipes his nose with a gloved hand. They were good people. Sorry that had to happen to him. He stretches and his spine pops like a handful of firecrackers. I think I've been up something like 36 hours straight. He drops his arms, and this has been one shit stain of a day. Time to end it. The orc turns to you, raises raises an eyebrow. Anything you need before I leave you to it? Just you and Isabel living here. Is there a place for my stuff? Yeah, check the locker over there. You can stash your stuff in it. No one to touch your things in there, and it's a lot bigger than it looks. This is you and Isabel living here. Goblet's mouth screws up a bit. Now that Nightjar and Gut shot a gun, it's just us. A squeal of metal grinding on metal rips through the boat. It sounds like it's coming from the level below. And a creepy Russian guy renting the engine room downstairs. Nothing to worry about. He mostly keeps to himself. She checks her PDA. He'll stop soon. He's usually quiet by now. How'd you get your hands on this place? How do people like us get our hands on anything? We found it. You found it empty? He sleeps his eyes across the cabin. The doubt is playing on his face. Somebody abandoned a prime piece of real estate like this? Oh, come on, Donkey. Don't you understand what you found it me? Close enough. It was full of BTL junk when we came across it. They were completely wicked out on some multiplayer cyber game. I'm not sure they ever shipped out of it. They were completely emaciated, stewing in piles of their own shit. Their eyes had sunk into their skulls. Pretty gruesome stuff. They racked up a kilo score, though. True, they had the moves. Should have hung an IV while they were playing, though. Turns out, nutrition is important. So what happened? Did I? She shrugs. Nigel ran him out. Not sure what happened to him after that. Anyway, it's ours now. Auntie Chang says so. All but the engine room. You... Right, everything but that. Auntie rooted it out from under us. That must have pissed you off. She shrugs. Whatever, we weren't using it. As long as our downstairs neighbor keeps to himself, he can have the lower level. Especially if it keeps Auntie Chang happy. I'll have a look around. Okay, but get some sleep soon. You look like you could use it. We'll go see kindly in the morning. Figure out your next move. Okay, so where is this uh, affirmation? I'm gonna guess it's over where that uh, diamond is. Over here. Bunk stash. So what can I stash? Guessing my gear. Okay. See, what do I have equipped right now? Have them both equipped? Can I switch between weapons? Ah, I have to get another battle to find out. But uh, I do want to see what's up the state. Oh, I can talk to Duncan. Oh, and Isabel. I wonder what she's talking about. Come back later. MS, I'm busy. Ah. This girl is really sh much shorter than what I was. Hey, Mushi, I got some things to take. I gotta take care of here. Let's talk later. Alright. Well, I'm guessing everybody's conversation is gonna go something along those lines. The cot in your cabin is neatly made with crisp looking sheets and an insulated plastic blanket. A fine layer of dust coats its surface. It's been a long time since anybody slept here. Go to sleep. 
You climb into the cot and worm your way under the sheets. They even start stiff as boards, but you slept plenty. You slept beneath. The lights and dead bugs that play your old prison cell are mercifully absent here, and the salt is and the salt air is fresher than the rancid stink of the Redmond Barrens. The moment your head hits the pillow, exhaustion sets in. You can barely keep your eyes open. Sleep washes over you like a warm bath, and everything goes black. That's a creepy sound. Hey, that guy looks like Aku. Oh, sort of. Uh -huh. The dream is suffocating, the shifting tunnel of glass and steel, the towering chalet of dark majesty, the shadow doorway, and the teeth. They snap at your heels as you claw your way back to consciousness. You open your eyes to Duncan looming over you. He shakes your shoulder roughly. Mushi, come on Mushi, wake up. We gotta go talk to Kylie and the others have already left. What's your problem, Duncan? Sounds like you're late. By drooling? That was one. Let's go over your shoulder. Cross the thumb at the hatch. We gotta go. I've been trying to wake you for a while now. You are thrashing around in your sleep. Uh. We don't want to keep a mob boss waiting. I'm thinking too. I'm good to go. From the expression on his face, he doesn't look good to go. You get some rest? He reaches up and rubs the back of his neck. Enough, I guess. His fingers hit a knot. He winks. I didn't sleep well last night. Bad dream. Yeah, me too. Guess that's why I was thrashing. Guess so. I'm not surprised we both had nightmares, though. He stresses his shoulders. Nothing's gone right since he stepped foot in this country here. Think about it. That statement from the cops on the newscast could be fake. Ours was. And that surveillance footage? We never saw Raymond get shot. The camera was hit by stray gunfire. His passion is intense, but contained. Focus. Raymond's alive. I know it. Uh, make a good case, Officer Wu. He smiles. His teeth are white and straight and perfect. Could have been a detective instead of a headbuster, right? His smile fades. God, I feel like I'm 12 years old again, squatting on a crawler. My partner's gone. Raven's gone. Hell, I'm gone. I don't even have a name anymore. Now I can't even go to sleep and hide from it all without having a nightmare. His jaw tightens and his teeth. Grind so loud you can hear it. What else is going to be taken away from me? Nothing. It's time for us to turn the tables, do some taking of our own. I'm up for that line of logic. Who's head cocks like he's gotten to send or something? I've heard that's home before. What are you talking about, Nushi? I do think that, uh kind of distrustworthy, but we do need her. I want to, I want to X her off just yet. Living in the shadows, dealing with criminals. We was silent for a moment. All you get is a blank expression. You think of becoming a shadow runner. He says without judgment, just a statement of fact. What do you think that jump to the Walt City was? I think we already are, Shadow. I think he stops and causes arm, considers. I think this whole thing is in a blur. I haven't been able to really stop and think for a second. He shakes his head slowly, licks out a groan. This isn't the way it's supposed to be. I'm supposed to be a cop. I want to but we play the cop. <laughs> I don't want to. That was then, this is now. He drops his hands to his hips and takes a couple of deep breaths. That's right, that's right. It's like Ray always said. Set up Duncan and let Mushi do the talking. Life is in position. When the winds of change blow, some people build walls, other build windmills. I don't know. Sounds like something. He chuckles, finally. Raymond never said that. It was our housekeeper, Miss Maloney. <laughs> oh yeah, right. I liked her. Me either. He checks his watch. Gobbit and Isabel left a while ago. We should get going too. See what that triad lady has to say. Alright, well that talk went great.
forward in front. Kind of zoomed in, didn't it? See the bodyguard or something. He's always standing there. There's Isabel and God. Wait, somebody? Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, there is. But. Where's the. I guess I just walk over there. How these plates reeks of still cigar smoke and fresh urine. The clicking of Mahjong tiles is strangely absent. In its place is a low murmur of laughter and an air of eager anticipation. All eyes are focused on the groaning figure kneeling bloody and bound at the feet of Kindly Chang. She beckons to him with her finger and he struggles towards her, the loud rustling of the plastic tart crackling under his knees as he's moved. His pants are wet with fear. Ah, that's where the peak. And as and torch lies on the table at Chang's right hand. Tiny Chang ignores the scene. She behaves as if all is right in the world. How did you sleep, my little ones? Like a baby. I'm still at the globe of our tour. <laughs> Not too well. I had a bad dream. Fine. Thank Guy on the floor. She indicates the newly man with an incline of her nose. Shipper, here is a plain clothes cop. He snuck into the area last night while you were sleeping, hoping to find you and kill you before his competition got to you first. My men found him outside the traveler you were sleeping on. They saw too that your rest was undisturbed and that your location made them miss. She nods her head back towards the pillar of meat standing behind her. You could thank Mr. Bao for that. Oh. Nah, that strangler Bao. Bao inclines his head one quarter of an inch. He addresses the bloody man on his knees. Now, shit, Bert. Tell my friends here what you told me. I. I don't know anything, I swear. We just got the orders in last night. He pushes his head toward you and Wu from the floor, struggling to keep his balance. Somebody high up wants these two dead. The whole department is on it. I don't know anything else. Someone from high up? The old woman lifts her foot, taps her chin with the toe of her shoe. How high? The cop looks at her, looks around at the room filled with triad soldiers. One of them opens his coat and shows the cop something inside. He closes it slowly and winks. The cop drops his head to his chest all the way, all the way up. It's someone in the, on the council. Someone on the executive council wants the two dead? Hank spits on him with a sneer. Fuck your ancestors to the 18th generation. Give me the truth. The cop wears the spittle. He never lifts his head. It's the truth, madam, I swear it. Whoever it was labeled him as terribus, we're to terminate with extreme prejudice. Tiny Chang shuffles closer to the kneeling cop, reaches down and strokes his head with her hand. Then she slowly digs her fingers into the scalp. She pulls back hard until his chin points high. A triad boss leans in closer and searches his eyes with her own. That's all he's got. She lets go of his head and smooths his buzz cut hair with her hand. For whatever reason, last night someone on the executive council of the Free Enterprise Zone ordered a Hong Kong police force to kill two nobodies from Seattle. I find that fascinating, don't you? I call that some messed up shit. Not really corporation in this order to cults to kill people here? Yes, but why do the uh, but why do need to label us international terrorists? I do find that really What's the dip? She strokes the policeman's cheek with the back of her hand. Her rusty voice becomes sweet as she explains the ways of the world. Property, my darling. The government has someone gunned down, they prefer to make it appear justified. The people feel safer when their murders feel like part of civilization. My, my. But you have definitely fallen into the deep end of the pool. Seattle isn't like Hong Kong. There, the mega courts control the government. Here, the corps are the government. The exec council is chosen by the corporate board of governors. They're basically the legislative and executive branches of the Hong Kong government in one tiny package. Eight people call all the shots. Neat and efficient. Tiny Ching steps back from the cop and lights one of her thin black cigars. For the wage slaves and the civilian sheep, the corporations are a pantheon of gods who wield absolute power. She looks around the room, but not for us. The triad woman takes a long pull from her cigar and taps her ash on the kneeling cop's head. Who knows? Who else knows about my guest visit to Huey Shitbird? 
No one, madam. I hadn't called it in yet. I wanted to kill for myself. No one knows they're here, I swear it. He turns to her enforcer. Mr. Bao? Bao fiddles with the PDA in his meaty hands. He's telling the truth. No outgoing calls on his PDA. Very good. Thank you, Bao. She nods at the cop. Thank you for your honesty. In one smooth motion. Oh my god. Strangler Bao produces a silenced pistol, fires it once into the policeman's head, and replaces it in his jacket. His face never changes its expression. <laughs> I was wondering what we were going to do with him. Looks like the triads can be just as efficient. I don't want to say that one. I was wondering what we were going to do. Train takes the dragon of his cigar, indicates the body. He knew, my darling. He knew. She places, balances her cigar on her shot glass, picks up some mahjong tiles, and begins playing with them absently. It is clear our friend Raymond Black was up to something involving the walled city, something having to do with prosperity. And this executive council member wanted Raymond dead for it. She stacks her tiles one by one. Click, clack. Now they want you dead for it, too. Click. This plastic face man may show up on your door one day, too. She knocks the pile over and it clatters to the table cl table loudly. I have a proposal for you, my sweets. A smile lights up her dead black eyes. Work for me. With night, gar night jar and gut shot dead, I find myself with two job openings. Fill them. I have need of deniable assets here. Players unaffiliated with the triads who can take care of some of the more unsavory business needs about town. You've proven yourselves resourceful and you have no existing connections here. That can be a positive in this line of work. See, Duncan, I knew it. She wants us to become Shadow Warners. Shadow Runners, huh? What a surprise. This line of work sounds dangerous. Shadow Runners. Uh, I, I kind of want to float, but then yep, you saw that coming. In exchange, I would keep you safe from pests like this one. She nods at the body of the floor. The pool of blood on the plastic wrap continues to widen. You have a safer harbor here in my town and a steady source of income. She picks up a handful of tiles again. And while you dip your toe into the waters of corporate espionage, organized crime, and clandestine mercenary actions, I will employ my network to find the plastic face man and gather information about Raymond Black, where he's been, who he's talked to, who stood the game from his death, what his prosperity could be. What's in it for you? Besides the money and the benefits of helping others in my community, I need to learn who killed one of my clients and in order to cost to execute my team of battle runners, her voice drops and she becomes deadly serious. This is a brazen disregard of my power. Face dictates it must be confronted or I stand to lose everything. How would the arrangement work? Kill and he orders us to? And we shall, my sweet. He leans in, work with me. Allow me to help you make money. Let my network work for you and help you find out what you've gotten yourselves into. Without my help, you won't last a day out there. You're completely out of your death, I'm afraid. You need a partner. Kylie Chang would be your partner. Wu's hands go to his hips. He drops his head and shakes a little, amused. It was just like you said, Mushi. Shouter runners. Glad I had some time to think about it. Process. He grips the back of his neck, squeezes hard, rips his hand away. Ah, fuck it. I'm not a cop anymore. That guy's dead. He nods. The decision's made. I'm in. What about you? I'm in too. I didn't have anything back home anyway. Uh, I'm in until I clear my name and get the hell out of Hong Kong. I'm gonna find out who killed Raymond, so I'm gonna pay. I think it's a lot too. Let's run the shadows and figure out what happened to him. I'm in two. Or not. Ravens is alive. I'm sure of it. So I'll run the shadows as long as Auntie Chain keeps up her end of the bargain and helps us figure out what really happened to him. Then I'm going to find my father. Then it's done. Huey is now open to you. 
She gestures to her lieutenant who raises a finger to her ear and whispers into her sleeve. First order of business, MS here has already chosen a street name. She turns her attention to Wu. But Mook Duncan Wu don't exist anymore. You want to get a new one too. Wu shies. Yeah, okay. I'll think of something. Gobbit runs her cheek against her rats, a glint in her eye. I think we've already got you covered, gun show. She turns to Isabel. Fits, doesn't it? Indeed. I knew that was going to stick. It has stuck. Gobbit, Isabel, we'll handle this the same way we did with all your previous work. She didn't say Nightjar. All the dots I line up for you will be sent to your computer on the squat boat. She's pointing at you. I got it. Why her? It's a simple process of elimination. She points to the little decker. Isabel isn't the leader type. You got that right. She moves her hand to the orc girl. As for Gobbit, let's just say Gobbit doesn't have a head for business. Not my thing. Then she rests her finger on Wu. And then there's Gun Show. She wiggles it. The jury's out on Mr. Gun Show. Meaning? Her response is direct, straightforward. Meaning there's a lot going on with that head of yours right now, and I'm not sure I can trust you. So I'm gonna charge because I'm the best of the worst, so I'm in charge. Gun Show will be fine, trust me. Jury's out with me too, Duncan. You're a raw nerve, and I'm gonna have to keep my eye on you. So I'm in charge because I'm the best of the worst. Oh, my sweet. Don't put it that way. She opens her arms. You're the most equipped for the role. She's making sense. You're the right person for this, Lucy. I had a handle back in the Barrens, MS. Guess it's time I dusted it off. Okay, then. Guess I'm running the show. Why not? Who shakes his head? Eyebrow really. It's gonna be weird calling you MS again. Haven't called you that since we were kids. Gobbit looks from Isabel to Wu to you. I guess this is our new crew. The rat on her shoulder scurries to the top of her head for a better view. Welcome to the shadows, MS. Alright, and so with that, I'm going to end the video here because I know we are way over time. So if you liked the video, comment or subscribe below. And Mushi Gamer signing out.